John Durham indictment of Igor Danchenko, uh, who was in reportedly arrested for lying to the FBI. And the particular lie that he was arrested for was when I guess questioned about the steel dossier. He specifically said that he had not met with or I guess received information through PR executive one. And that is confirmed by the Washington post to be Christopher Dolan. And, and so we'll get into all of this as, as you know, it made sense and comes up. I'm going through this article right here in the wall street journal titled Durham and the Clinton dossier. Uh, it's kind of interesting that I now see a lot of people walking and not using steel dossier when that's what it's been called the whole time. And I think that's the term that we should stick with. Although Clinton dossier at the very least kind of does go to show the the real origins of this, which was the Clinton campaign. And now this has uh, been further been proven. And so uh, Dancheco reported or provided the uh, FBI and Steele with a whole bunch of information that was in the dossier. And uh, I guess let's talk about the Steele dossier for just one second for people who don't remember. This was so key to the whole Russiagate narrative, right? You know, there were claims that Russia wanted to help Trump win the election, uh, but why would, would be the question? And the answer came from the Steele dossier, and it was that. Putin had what they called compromise, which was, you know, compromising information, but they said in Russian to make it sound more scary, even though you would think that was kind of like racist or at least insensitive, but never mind that, you know, Rachel Maddow just said that stuff. And, you know, you had uh, John Brennan at the time saying that Russians were like pre genetically predisposed to undermine American democracy and crazy stuff like that. But uh, the Steele dossier was like really the connection of everything because it had a whole bunch of false information in it, but it also like set the the link between everything that was unknown and then this came to the public and said look how terrible donald trump is and all the proof in here the fbi is looking into this uh mother jones described christopher for steel when they first reported the steel dossier as a credible source with a proven record of providing reliable sensitive and important information to the u.s government and said that this was troubling uh, the steel dossier, right? So this, this was presented as true and it, it was just so central to the Russiagate narrative. And it was also, you know, steel uh, information from the steel dossier was used in the, the FISA court applications, uh, by the FBI to spy on members of the Trump administration. Now, uh, of course, this really all fell apart for anybody who is like watching this show or paying attention to the time in 2017 when it became clear that the FBI had gone through, investigated the claims that were made in the Steele dossier and had concluded that anything that wasn't already public knowledge like Donald Trump hosted, I think, Miss Universe or whatever the hell he had uh, in Russia, like it, there was stuff in there that was true, like Trump had been to Russia before, but all the stuff about the P tape or any other other sens sensationalized uh, information in the Steele dossier turned out to be completely untrue. And we found out then that the subsource, uh, th this was from uh, Inspector Gen DOJ Inspector General Michael Horowitz, uh, in his report, uh, exposed that it, uh, Mr. Dancheco, the, the Russian subsource that Steele used, said that he didn't expect Steele to use the information because he said it was just hearsay. And, uh, you know, we're finding out more, including uh, uh, Fusion GPS, which worked for the Clinton campaign, actually commissioned uh, the Steele dossier. And so this was opposition research from the start and well known. Uh, and again, going back to 2017, it was known that this was just opposition research and not actually like something put together uh, intended to. It was meant to smear Donald Trump. It wasn't actually meant to be an indictment. Right. Um so then the, we, we go on here in, in this article, um, 
that says, and they start to get into Dan Chedko, who worked, I guess, from Brookings uh, between 2005 and 2010, and that this would be a reason that wouldn't really make sense that this guy would have any like particular information or knowledge. He was never some high-ranking Russian or anything like that, and you know, it's just so many holes into the this whole uh, Hillary thing. Now. Uh, around that same time that he's working for Brookings, he meets PR exec one or uh, Christopher Nolan, uh, Dolan, excuse me. And uh, he was working for the Bill Clinton campaign on state levels in 1992 and 1996. And then he was on a State Department advisory campaign uh, committee for the Clinton presidency. During the Hillary administration, he was a volunteer for that campaign. And so then in August, there's an email from Dan Chesko to Dolan asking for rumors about Trump, uh, saying that basically he's looking to dig up some dirt or, or something against that. He had a project against Trump, and uh, he said that he, he asked Dolan if they had anything. Dolan says that he had a friend with a GOP friend of mine who knows some of the players and provided a whole bunch of gossip to uh, Dan Chetko and some of this gossip it's reported appeared in the, the steel dossier verbatim, uh, or nearly verbatim. Right. And so it, it turns out that Dan Chetko wasn't getting this information from any kind of Russian source whatsoever, which is implied, but rather was getting this information from Dolan, who's a longtime Clinton apparatchik, right? He's he's a part of the Clinton man, uh, machine, a, a big supporter of the family. And so this seems to be a real problem. Uh, but also, I believe it turns out here that Dolan admits that he didn't even have a conversation with a, a Russian uh or not a Russian, a GOP colleague, but rather just took information that he was seeing reported publicly or I guess fabricated and told this. And this is essentially what the American people ended up believing. Now imagine this, that at least almost every Democrat, everyone who voted for Hillary Clinton really believed this information was true that Donald Trump paid hookers to pee on, um, somebody in a bed or on a bed that Obama slept in at the Moscow Ritz Carlton. And this wasn't from Russian sources. It was from a Clinton campaign supporter. Uh, and you know, there's even more evidence of this. Uh, the indictment notes that Mr. Dolan, uh, traveled to the Moscow Ritz Carlton and met with the manager and the staff and toured the presidential suite. And so all this came, uh, from Mr. Dolan. And this is, this is really crazy. Um, let's see here. Now, there's a, another connection where it seems that Dolan was probably uh, funneling information into the Steele dossier, and that was by his contact with Olga Galkina, who was a source, a, a different source for Mr. Danchenko, but with Dolan meeting with her, it seems maybe, and this, I guess, doesn't seem yet to be proven, but it seems very possible that, you know, he was funneling information to Miss, um, Miss, uh, what's her name here? Uh, Galkina, who then gave it to Dan Checo, and this gives it maybe an additional layer of, um, truth are seeming to, uh, at least in the eyes of the FBI, well, you know, you're not, you don't only have one subsource, you have two. Well, no, really, it is only one. It's just being, you know, funneled through like an, essentially an information broker, right? This lady is just playing a part and she was playing that part because she thought she was going to get a job in the state department. Um, so this is, I don't know, I think really damning. And this article from the Wall Street Journal ends with the Clinton dossier should go down as one of the biggest scandals in U.S. political history, not just for the breadth of the con, but for the time it has taken to expose it. And that is one of the important things here that isn't even discussed in this Wall Street Journal article. Uh, I, I think one that honestly, not to brag too much, but me and Will Porter wrote an article titled The Wreckage of Russiagate, where we explain how because 
does this Tutsil want to expose what happened here, that this was all just a Clinton campaign stunt to try to smear Donald Trump, uh, but was later, you know, used by the deep state uh, to alter Trump's Russia policy and to make the U.S. policy towards Russia more aggressive. This is absolutely insane that the U.S. policy towards the other world nuclear superpower was moved more hostile by just campaign smears, mudslinging during the campaign. And we have been on this from the absolute start, never bought the Russiagate narrative at all here, thought it was always bunk. And as the information started to come out and detailed research and looking through the documents, I was able to discover this was the truth. It's absolutely insulting that it took the mainstream media this long. Um, you know, Aaron Mate has this great screenshot here from the Washington Post where he says, or where they say, that allegations cast new uncertainty on some past reporting on the dossier by news organizations, including the Washington Post. But boy, does that really understate what that means, because for so long, a lot of the mainstream media reporting on why Donald Trump would maybe do anything uh, as far as Russia policy always told the people that maybe one of the reasons was compromise. Tons of tons of times for the past five years, they've had all these former deep state officials, John Brennan, James Comey, James Clapper, come on their shows to say, Oh my God, you can't believe what Donald Trump would do. And the reason is, is because Putin has damning information on it. And we know it because of the Steele dossier. Absolutely untrue. This is, this is big. And uh, it's very important. And while there's a ton of other important stuff going on right now, this is this is maybe one of the biggest indictments of the mainstream media uh, since the whole uh, Iraq I'm at WMDs, where uh, essentially everyone really but a few people at Fox News, and not to give too much credit to Fox, and then everybody in the independent media, including a lot of great left wing journalists and commentators like you know Aaron Mate, Glenn Greenwald, Matt Taibbi, Michael Trace. See Jimmy Dore, uh, Gareth Porter were all you know able to go through and debunk this, uh, you know, and that's why you know none of pe people who read those kind of sources never bought into this because you know that this was obviously untrue opposition research from the start, uh, but so it was pushed so much to the American people that still huge percentage of the Democrats uh, believe it. And, you know, I think it's really unfair to discuss anything that happened on January 6th and why people may be untrusting of an election after with the previous election, they actually tried to overturn it with this kind of information saying, you know, we, we have to have like the, the intelligence community brief Congress or brief the electoral college to tell them that the president that the people elected may be a Russian Asian are owned by the Russian president. And so they could overturn that and like make Colin Powell or Paul Ryan or somebody like that, the president over the will of the American people based on false uh, opposition research information. This is this is huge. This is uh, astounding. And so if people the next time didn't, you know, thought they tried to raid the election against Trump, uh, there's a lot of reason uh, to, I guess, you know, have doubts and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, this is, this is all really important information. And again, uh, I'm looking forward to reading more about it. And uh, hopefully there are more indictments to come to still, maybe even uh, Jonathan Steele or uh, the, the PR exec, I, I guess, here, Christopher Dolan. All right, now.